Are you planning to set up a drip email marketing campaign for your leads, but not sure where to begin? If this is your first time setting up a drip email marketing campaign, then I'm sure that trying to get organized is a little daunting. Take it from me, the first time I set up a drip email marketing campaign, I did not know where to begin or what to do. Emmanuel here, and please allow me to be your guide in providing you with a 12 touch email drip outline for nurturing your new leads. Are you trying to set up a real estate drip marketing campaign but not sure where to start? I know there are a ton of guides out there, but do you really wanna spend your time reading through all of them? Well, I'm hoping that this quick step-by-step -step guide will at least point you in the right direction in terms of creating your campaigns. All I ask for is that you click the like button. You know what helps out the video, you know what helps out the channel, and thank you so much in advance. Now, before I get started with this video, there are actually two prerequisites. Number one is that we're starting with the assumption that you already have an email marketing platform or CRM set up for drip marketing. And number two is that we're basing this video off of the use case that we're nurturing brand new leads. We are not talking about your contacts or anyone in your sphere. This video is strictly a discussion on cultivating new business. Now, before I start outlining these topics, it's always best to start with a customer profile. Simply put, a customer profile is essentially a description of a potential customer, their demographic information, their geographic location, and maybe their buying and selling needs. An example of this could be first time home buyers, a property owner that's about to face foreclosure, or maybe probates. The reason I say this is because each customer profile does require its own special unique messaging, but I'll get more into this later. Just remember that as you create email drips, please keep your customer's profile in mind. So in this particular video or use case, we're gonna go off of the assumption that this lead is a first time home buyer. So what I'd like to do now is outline the 12 topics for emails that you would need to create to nurture that brand new lead. All right, the first and easiest topic is the thank you email, which needs to go out immediately after acquiring that new lead. This is a very simple email that needs to be created that essentially says, hey, thank you for reaching out. I'll be in touch shortly, but here's my contact information if you need it. Email number two goes out the following day, and this is essentially a value add email. This email can be in the form of steps to purchasing your first home, or maybe tips for first time home buyers. Email number three needs to essentially go out two days after the thank you email. This email should really be about reinforcing your brand. The messaging should be about you and why you are the choice for your potential leads business. All right, email number four, which essentially goes out a week or seven days after you sent out that thank you email. This is another email that needs to provide value in the form of knowledge to your potential lead. Ideas for this email could be communities at your service or maybe popular, popular neighborhoods that you recommend. Please keep in mind that these are just ideas. At the end of the day, you have creative freedom on the type of value add emails that you wanna create. So go with what you think would fit the best. Email number five should go out the following day or eight days after the thank you email. This is another email about brand reinforcement. You can use this as an opportunity to share success stories in the form of testimonials from previous clients. Email number six should go out the following week or two weeks after that thank you email. This is gonna be another email providing value. An idea for this could be funding your first home. And if you're already working with a lender, then maybe you can drop their name. Email number seven is another brand reinforcement email which should go out essentially the following day. The subject of this email could be notable listings. For example, some of your active listings or maybe listing highlights from a particular community. Now we're on to emails eight and nine which go out three weeks after that first thank you email. You should already start seeing a pattern here. Essentially, it's a value add email followed up by a brand reinforcement email the following day. A value add email for email topic number eight could essentially be highlights about a particular neighborhood or why people like living in that neighborhood. As for your brand reinforcement email, try going with showing some of your recent closings. Now, as we move into emails 10 through 12, the frequency actually changes up a little bit. Instead of two emails per week, we're now switching to one. The focus of these last three emails is to try to generate engagement because this is essentially your last ditch effort if you haven't really been able to get a solid response. Email number 10 could be trying to connect with that lead outside of just the basics of email and telephone. Share your social media accounts and your LinkedIn profile. Use it as opportunities to try to engage with them on different platforms. Email number 11 is the check-in email. This is an email where you ask a simple question just to try to generate a response. The goal here is to generate some sort of engagement to still try to gauge the interest. 
Lastly, we're talking about email number 12, which is the pivot email. If the lead still remains pretty much non-responsive for the duration of the drip, then you can close out the email by saying, hey, this is the last time I'm gonna contact you, but I will keep your email saved and I will be sending you, you know, just basic real estate information and updates and maybe market reports. You can then move them into what I call the long-term lead category. These are leads that have shown some sort of interest but have fallen out of your sales funnel. The key here is that you at least still have their contact information. So use this as an opportunity to at least try to stay top of mind. And there you have it, 12 email topics for a drip email email campaign. If you want to use this as a reference guide, I'm going to leave an outline of it in the description below. Anyway, I hope you found this valuable to at least point you in the right direction for creating an email drip outline. If you have any other ideas for email topics, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and let the community know. Aside from that, I hope you found some value in this video. And if you did, please click that like button. Also be sure to click the subscribe button and that bell icon so you can get notified for new videos. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video.